This episode is brought to you by Modal Electronics, who enable you to play and perform powerful sound with their incredible synthesizers. You can enjoy vibrant wavetable patches with the Argon 8 series, or you can produce with state-of-the-art analog style synth textures with the Cobalt 8 series. To check out Modal Electronics' incredible array of synthesizers, go to modalelectronics.com. Modal Electronics, dare to sound different. Um, that is a good question. First time I was drawn to music, I think forever. I mean, I, I can't feel like there was like an exact point in my memory, but it's just always been in my in my bones, really. Like as soon as there's there's home videos of me singing at family parties at three years old, and I actually saw the video again recently, and I hadn't seen it for years because uh, my mum put together this little compilation for my thirtieth birthday of like old memories and stuff and you can just tell that I love music from even as young as that and I'm trying to sing and everyone is joining in I'm telling them not to join in I'm like no I'm singing um so I think I've just always loved it and my my mum and dad are just big lovers of music and they always had it playing in the house I had a an amazing record record collection um loads of vinyls um how early on did you think you know I want to sing and I want to do this professionally um I guess like seriously uh I'm just trying to think of like the actual moment but I just feel like it has been has been forever and I guess I I went to like a, a performing arts school from 11 um so that was the first time that I guess I was like auditioning for things and like trying to take it more seriously but then I started actually writing properly um well actually co-writing like my first album I was about 14 um and I think that's when it started to be more serious like when I was actually making an album and like writing in America and like signed my record deal and started working with my music manager um so that's I guess when it got a bit more serious and and how did it because yeah you you were so young when you when you started um what was like the first uh, professional thing you did in, you know, the arts as it were? Was it was it going to the West End? Yeah, what was the first thing I did? I know I, I did um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang at the London Palladium. I think I was about 12. Um, so that could have been one of the first jobs that I got. Um, you know, it's like being part of the, it was Italia Conti, the school I went to, and there was like an agency attached to the school. So I think that that could have been one of the first jobs I did at a young age. And then after that, I did a um, Roger Waters from Pink Floyd had a, an opera and um, they needed like a child singer on the um, recording of the album. That was soon after that. That was my second job. And I loved that because it's the first time like going into the, um, an amazing recording studio in Angel and they had this incredible orchestra. And um, yeah, I was just so excited to sort of be in that wow. for the first time. Yeah, um, that sounds amazing. And but, uh, is Italia Conti, is that still around? And is, uh, was everybody kind of doing that? You know, you said the school had an agency attached. So was everybody kind of getting work like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and, and doing that? Or, or uh, were you quite unusual in that sense of starting quite serious professional things that, that young? Yeah, I guess, um, so Italia Conti, actually, I think the school is not gonna be able to carry on, um, which is really sad because it's been going for years and years and years and years and years and years. And I had the absolute best time at that school. Like I learned so much, um, but I made the best friends there. There was like never a dull moment. It was just fun, fun, fun all the time. Um, so it was a great way to learn just like being in the in the industry and I loved it so it's a shame about that um, but what was the question oh yes yeah, so, so as soon as you um, join the school then you're on the the agency and a few of my friends were also uh, in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang as well from my year and younger um, but obviously we still had to do our schoolwork and like 
you know, our dance exams or whatever it was. So um, couldn't take too much time off, but yeah, we'd get a few auditions that would come in randomly. And I was lucky just to do a few, a few when I was younger, I guess, just to like get started and learn some cool things. Mm. And, and so you started recording an album very young uh, and, and like, how, how did that, you know, come about? Um, how did the circumstances to you signing a record deal um, come about? W were you kind of spotted in one of the plays that you were working on, one of the, you know, like the Roger Waters opera or, or one of these type of things? Or was that, was your music like completely se separate? Um, yeah, completely separate, to be honest, because the school, um, it was more musical theatre. So we learned, um, you know, drama and, and more in the musical theatre world. Um, but for the recording and the writing, that was a completely separate thing. So I always knew I wanted to write my own songs and have my own albums. And I would just go and find my own auditions. Like, I don't know if it's still around, but the stage newspaper I loved and I used to get it all the time. And um, there would always be auditions, like open auditions. So I'd always just find my own alongside. And um, this particular time, there was an ad saying, looking for the next pop diva. And um, it was, you had to be 16, but I was 14 at this time. And I went for the audition. And I remember there being like a massive queue outside. It's the same at all of them, but you never know. Like I went to some that turned, it, turned out not to really be legitimate or for anything that led to anything but this you know you still gotta go and give it a go and actually for this one my mum and dad weren't going to take me because it was like really far over the other side of London and we'd been at something late the night before and it's really strange actually because we've recently moved house and where that audition was and where I did like my first photo shoot with that manager from that audition is literally down the road to where we've moved to so it's really sort of strange it's gone like a full circle but um yeah when I went to the audition um I started working with my first manager from that um and then I started writing and he flew me over to New York and I started working with um a songwriter producer called Peter Zizzo and um, I recorded one of his songs and uh, he played it to L.A. Reid, who was at Island Def Jam at the time. And yeah, he said, oh, he wants to meet you. I don't think it works like, like this as much anymore, but he flew over to London and I said to my school that I had a dentist appointment. <laughs> and then I went to meet him at his hotel and I was with my manager and he was with his team. And um, he was like, I love the song that you've done. Can you sing it? And I was like, sure. And I went to sing the song, but um, it was on a copy disc. So the, the CD wasn't working. You know, when we used to like copy CDs onto discs sometimes, and then sometimes it didn't work in the CD player. So that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, which other artists do you like? And I was like, well, I love, um, Mariah Carey and he just signed her for her comeback Emancipation of Mimi album I was like no oh. way that's so cool and um he was like we'll sing one of her songs so then I just sang him one of her songs and then yeah and then we started like making an album wow and you said it, things don't work like this anymore uh you know how do you think they've changed is it is it that perhaps maybe to get to those type of meetings and stuff, uh, you kind of just need to put up something, whether it's on TikTok or on Spotify or wherever, and it kind of needs to be doing pretty well. And then then you'll have some, you know, somebody knocking on your door. Is that the way in which it's changed? I guess like, I, I always believe there's no rules with anything, but I definitely think it's changed in, that way for sure. Like obviously that was a long time ago and the music business has changed loads and loads. You know, the rise of social media has been a massive thing and people are making waves from numbers on TikTok or, you know, things like going viral online and stuff like that. So yeah, it definitely has changed a lot. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. And uh, so when, when you first signed, um, you wrote, you know, a bunch of, 
big songs for other artists. Um, was that something that you were aiming to take seriously as your own career? Um, how, how come you gave, you gave away some some songs that you know some of which turned out to be very successful? Yeah, I think that um, I always um, look to write for myself when I go into sessions. It will always be for an album or a song for myself. Um, but sometimes, and yeah, I ended up doing so many sessions, and like in my life, I've just I've written so many songs and done so many sessions with so many different people. And I think you know, not they're not all going to make the album. And they don't always make that final 12 or however many you've got on the record. So, um, and I always love all of them because you feel like, you know, you're part of their creation and they all mean something to you. So it's always hard to, you know, think that there's so many songs on my like iTunes library that fr through the, all the years, like since I was like 14, that no one will ever, ever, ever hear. And luckily, sometimes they get picked up by other artists. I've just been, been really lucky with that but I love writing, I love writing. And I think the older I've got as well, I think even more so, I think just because obviously you learn more and just more experiences and writing with so many different people. I love the whole collaborative thing. I love writing with other people because you can bounce off ideas and challenge each other to, to push the lyric to make it even better. Um, so yeah, I love that side of things. I love that. Mm. And, and and in terms of your first record and you know your first single, it was an it was an unbelievable uh, you know debut. Or uh, it was what a start to your career it was. Um, your, you know your first single, Mama Do, that went straight to number one, right? Um, what, what what was the what was the feeling there like? And uh, you know how old were you when when that happened? Um, I was eighteen when that happened. Wow. Uh, and oh, I don't feel so old because I'm 30 now. I turned 30 <laughs> in January. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. Like I, it's something I dreamed of my whole life. I always wanted to just release my own songs and like do a music video and put it into the charts and like something I dreamed of my whole life. So when it actually finally happened and, you know, I've been working on it for so many years, I started writing that album at 14. So it felt like, even though I was still only 18, it felt like it was like a lifetime. I was so frustrated. I was, I thought I was ready to go, you know, at 14, but in hindsight, it was obviously a good move to wait till then. But um, yeah, the feeling was like, crazy I think because it was such a, a long process and it felt like a long build-up then as soon as and the charts worked differently back then as well and mm. as soon as it came out it was like bang and everything then went really fast so it was like a massive contrast and I guess I just had to get used to all this all the you know stuff that comes along with it like all the all the promo and all the pictures and all the festivals and it was just it was a really exciting time yeah, I mean, it must have been. I mean, it must must be one of the most successful uh, debut albums ever. Um, you know, uh, not only did the, did Mama Do go to number one, the second single Boys and Girls also went to number one, and the album was huge, like this multi platinum album. So uh, I guess guess my question is, after all of that like unbelievable uh, success, what was it like recording the second album, and you know how much of a challenge? um was that process yeah I guess um I'm just trying to like think back I think it was it was so ex exciting and like I, I was like traveling the world and like seeing all these different places and then and then um I couldn't wait to just get going on the on the second album and I guess like show a different side and again it was the same process where um I'm trying to think how many years I was working on the second one for. Um, but yeah, I was working with loads of different writers and producers, like every day I was with a new, a new writing team um, and we just recorded so many demos. And then again, it goes to the process of cutting it down. And then I always find that really hard. So I think we did a deluxe album where we had like, we could choose more songs to put on the album. <laughs> Um, and what I think of with the second album was spending, I spent quite a lot of time in Asia um, with that 
with that album, which I, I love it there so much. I actually really miss it and I can't wait to, you know, when things go back to normal and, and you know, we can like travel again. I can't wait to go back there. Um, because Where, yeah, it's Where amazing over there and the people. Um, I went to loads of different places, but um, in particular, I went to Japan quite a lot. Mm. Um, and yeah, I just loved the whole, I just love it over there. Yeah. And I love um, yeah, such like lovers of music and yeah, they they still buy um, they still buy physical records, don't they? In in Japan, that's like a a huge part of their culture. Apparently, they they still have Tower Records, and they yeah, I don't yeah, know, which it's is so cool. Really, really cool. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that, that will be amazing to go to when uh, when travel does open up. Um, and I mean, so with the sec with the second record, obviously all, all about tonight was was another number one. And you, you know that for, for a lot of people, I, I think that might be their favorite uh, of your songs. So was it kind of was it a relief? Because obviously the second album, like the sophomore album or whatever, that's like an, a thing in music where people get really if they've had a smash, then all the expectation is quite intense yeah. on the second album. Were, were you feeling that a lot? Um, I think in general, I am a sort of go with the flow kind of person. Um, and I always said, like, I know um, I got asked a lot, like, do you feel the pressure of this or that? And I think as soon as I start focusing on pressure and thinking about that, that's where it all just goes like pear shaped and it just like can't get handle on it. So I just don't, focus on that and just go with the flow um but yes all about tonight is yeah I was lucky with that one because it's one that I always at festivals or shows it will always be the last song because it's the one that gets everyone up and dancing and like moving along so I have had a lot of um, fun with that one. And it's funny actually I'm saying go with the flow because one of the lyrics in this song is go with the flow but I'm not doing that on purpose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no that is a that is definitely one that always ends the ends the set um but also I got to do like some fun really fun collaborations on that album like I did um a collaboration with Jason Derulo and like I said I went to Asia a lot I did a collaboration with GD and Top from Big Bang um oh. so that was like amazing and really, really fun. And we got to um, meet at like a festival over in, in Japan, Spring Groove, I think it was called. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got really happy memories from that time. This feels like so long ago, but it is now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, <laughs> you know, the years have, have passed quickly because it does feel like it was it, it was recent in, in, in some ways. But I mean, I guess an illustration of how much the industry has changed um, is that you know all of your albums. Uh, I'm, I'm probably my favorite is uh, is Pixie Lot. You know your your, your most recent like full studio album uh, because uh, it's got all those like Motown influences and things that uh, I, I thought thought were great. But an illustration of how much the industry has changed anyway is that all of the albums you know charted really well. Obviously, uh, Turn It Up was like the biggest, but. They all charted really well, all did really well, but the, in the Turn It Up era, albums were still selling like millions of copies, like when they did really well. And then by by the time you know we get to Pixie Lot, it's pro it was probably like mostly digital streaming. Um, so your career has literally followed the whole uh, trajectory of um, you know physical to streaming, and as we said, social media. Have you enjoyed that? Are you quite, I mean, you mentioned liking Japan. Are you quite uh, old school in, in the way that you uh, like the industry to work or do you do you like social media and the way things have, have, have kind of... I think a evolved? bit of both. Like you definitely have to go with the time so you don't get, you know, left behind at all. But, and I'm learning so much, like even every day it's changing, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think I think it's definitely got some great great um, qualities like social media, you can get things out there to everyone straight away and you can stay connected really well, which is great. And I love that. 
Um, but yeah, I'm old school as in I love, I still love an album. I love a body of work. Um, I love, I think the times of like actually holding physical CDs, like I loved that. I loved the little booklet in the, you know, in the front where you could read like the thank yous and you could see like all the lyrics and the pictures. Like I would always put like personal pictures in the back. Uh, so I do love all that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer still in albums and especially like, so I've been working on my album the last couple of years, um, sort of nearly finished, which is like wow. really exciting because we spent a lot of time and it's, and it's like a real, feels like a real body of work, like almost for the first time, because it's just a small team of people. Um, it's a really cohesive sound, very like raw and honest. And it feels like, like the album I've always wanted to do. Um, so yeah, more than ever, I, I believe in that sort of, yeah, real, real body of work. Yeah, yeah. And that, that kind of authenticity, trying to make something, uh, you know, stand the test of time. But in terms of, because yeah. that was going to be my, my next album, uh, my next uh, question, you know, when, <laughs> when's the next album coming? Uh, because, you know, it has, it has been a while. Why, why has there been such a gap? And, you know, where have you been recording um, this, you know, album hopefully to be coming out soon? Yeah. Um, I've just really taken my time um, on this one because I just want it to be right, really. And it's so... Like I said, it's very honest and it means like a lot to me personally. So um, yeah, I just wanted it to be right. And I've been really lucky um, with the guys that I've been working with because they're, I think that they're amazing. And it's the first time that I haven't, like the other albums have been a process of, like I said, working with loads of different writers and producers every single day, a different team, different sounds, different producers. This is the first time it's literally just us and I am just writing exactly what I want to write and doing what I want to do. So it feels, it, it's been the most fun for me process wise. And also, um, you know, obviously the lockdown the last year, we figured out mm. a way, cause I, I go over to LA to write and we figured out a way to do it via, there's an app called VST, I think it is VST. And I have my microphone and my like little system upstairs in the bedroom. And um, yeah, we just connect through this app and it's almost like I'm in the booth. So we've been able to finish off song ideas and vocal things, me being here and then being in LA, which has been really cool. We wouldn't have learned that if it wasn't for these times so I'm hoping that I'll be able to get it finished that way still um and then get it out there yeah that would be amazing uh when when do you reckon you you're hoping to release it or you're not putting yourself under pressure in, in that way yeah I'm not 100% sure yet like date wise I don't want to say anything in case anything changes it's hard to at the moment with any dates with anything yeah. um but it's nearly, it's exciting to, to sort of talk about it a little bit because it is nearly finished and I haven't been able to say that for a while. Um, but yeah, so, so hopefully soon. Yeah, well, that's, that's very exciting and yeah, looking forward to, to hearing it. But uh, well, now for the, for the like. second part of the episode, uh, and perhaps some of these uh, tunes will have been an influence on your, your new work. I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, how would you characterize these? Would they be your five favorite songs? Could you go that far or, or are they like five of your favorite? It's a really hard um, question saying like five of your favorite songs. And I still, um, I find it really, I'm finding it really hard, but I've got basically, I've got a playlist um, that I, made that I listen to like most mornings like getting ready or like if I want to shoot and I'm like getting ready I'll just I just play this as like a fail safe playlist um so there's loads of classics on there they're all like the classics but in terms of like my new album sound I've been listening to a lot of Joni Mitchell, Fleetwood Mac, Joe Cocker um a lot of uh sort of 70s era, but just amazing songwriting and very live organic sounds, which has been really amazing because I think they're like the best of the best. 
Um, so are. yeah, but then on the it's really hard because there's just so many, and I and I still haven't really narrowed it down to the five. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you um, could pick, you could pick five at random from the playlist and just just uh, you know just talk about why they're on there as opposed to going these are my five because it is too hard sometimes I mean my five would change every week probably it depends what you're obsessed with that week doesn't it yeah exactly it's really tough I don't know which ones to go for okay um I'm just gonna randomly, and these are all like well-known, well-known ones as well on here. But I think I'm gonna randomly go for. I'm gonna go for Fast Car first of all, which yeah, I, I, I didn't think I would. Um, by Tracy Chapman because, and it's just like made me think of this moment. Like I say, it's a fail-safe playlist that I put on. I was in a taxi going to work somewhere, but it was quite a long journey. And um, I asked the guy if he could put my like aux cable in to play it through the system. And so I played this playlist and I remember that song being prominent. And then when we got to the other end, he was like, can I just say, I had the worst morning this morning and I didn't even want to get out of bed. I didn't want to go to work. I didn't think I was going to get through the day. And just from hearing this playlist that has turned my whole day around and now I just feel in the best, happiest mood. And that just stuck with me afterwards because I was wow. like, music has the power to do that. <laughs> that, is, that is such an amazing story. God, that must have been, uh, that must have been very good for your Uber rating. Yeah. And uh, and and you know, so so, so <laughs> yeah, uplifting. Yeah. 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 I wish, um, I wish I wish Uber drivers were were that uh, happy in the past when I uh, took the aux cable out. <laughs> it's, uh, but yeah, what what a great what a great yeah. Story. And it is a very uplifting song. It's such a classic. Yeah, it's a classic, isn't it? And I just feel like, I don't know, I love the storytelly vibe and I feel like it's obviously was a big, big hit, but I feel like, I don't know, it's just personal to her. And yeah, I just, yeah. I think even though it's a song that everyone knows, everyone's heard loads of times, if you actually sit and listen to it, it is, it's really personal. And yeah, I love the, the storytelling vibe of that. So I've gone for that one. Mm -hmm. And now, um, okay, next up is going to be da, 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 da. actually, I feel like I have to say this because I always say this is my favorite song. Um, Love Come Down, it's called by Evelyn King, and I feel like it's like what my friends would think is like my song if it plays, then everyone's like, Oh, and then we have to go and dance to it. It used to be my ringtone. Um, it's one of the vinyls my mum and dad had, well, it was actually my mum's, that we used to play at home and we'd like dance up and down and around the house. Um, it's just a really good vibe. Do you know that one? It's an 80s well, one. Is, is, is it 80s like kind of disco? Not disco, yes. but like kind of funk, funk like, is that right? Yeah. I think I think I, I think I know the one. Yeah, Evelyn yeah. King. Yeah, I do know it. I do know it. Yeah. Uh, Evelyn Champagne yeah, King, right? She's got a, cl a classy one. middle name. Uh, yeah, I yeah. know. I know that. That is an absolute <laughs> banger. Uh, I was just hoping that that, that that I hadn't got confused with artists there because "Love Come Down" is like her biggest song. Yeah, that's 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 a really really great yeah. tune. Super catchy and yeah, yeah. It's a it's a feel good vibe. So I just loved it growing up. I'd always like if it came on the radio, like turn it right up. So it was just one that I don't know. I feel like is associated with me, although like. Like my album I'm making sounds nothing like that sound or anything. But um, yeah, I feel like I have to say that one. Um, if I'm going to say a, a Joni Mitchell song, I think I would say Both Sides Now. Mm. Um, again, because I love the lyrics. Yeah, Joni Mitchell is... And that song as well, I swear it's being brought up so much when people are choosing their favorites and Joni Mitchell. Oh, really? Oh, I, so. oh, I, forgot. 
Quite, quite rightly so. But, uh, but in so, would you say Joni Mitchell's more, uh, more the type of vibe that you're going for on uh, the album that you're making at the moment, like more organic sounds? Yeah, definitely more organic, very organic, very live. Um, but yeah, definitely as an inspiration. Like I love her again. The, the storytelling vibe, and um, yeah, I think she just has some brilliant, brilliant songs, and yeah, just a true artist, you know. Yeah, absolutely. One of one of the greatest. Yeah. Um, so that's three. So I've got two more to go. Um, and I'm going to go for... Wait, what have I said so far? You've said uh, Love Come Down. First one was Fast Car. Uh, second one, Love Come Down. Third one, Joni Mitchell, Both Sides Now. Both Sides Now, okay. I've got two more to go here. Mm-mm-mm. What am I going to go for? Oh, man. Hmm. It's a toughie. It's a toughie. <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> um, oh, man. It's so hard, this. I feel like I can't not say the Beatles. And if I have to pick my favourite Beatles song, obviously there's so many, but I feel like the ultimate classic has to be... Let it be. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see why you'd say that. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm like a Beatles obsessed. Uh, are but, you? Yeah, yeah, I love the What's Beatles. What's your favourite Beatles song? Well, it would change all the time. Uh, but I, I remember Let It Be being one of the biggest, because that's like, what is that? Is that a, a one for, for the music nerds listening, of which there are many? Uh, <laughs> is that that would be a one, four, five progression, I think. Uh, which is like used in loads of pop songs, right? Yes. So, so if you're learning to write pop songs, you know, let it be yeah. that progression. You could apply that. Is there that? I think it's that progression. There's that video, and it's literally like loads and loads of different, yeah. like absolute anthem. Uh, pop yeah, songs. It's too many can be written over those chords. Yeah, totally. It's so true. Um, um, but it is so amazing, isn't it? When did you yeah, start getting into the Beatles? When did I start? Again, I think always like my, one of my other favorite Beatles songs is In My Life. And that reminds mm. me of my nan um, on my dad's side, Nanny Bennett. Um, she was a big lover of music and she loved the Beatles. Um, and my dad had like their number one um, Beatles compilation. You know, it had a red cover with like yellow one on it. Um, mm. And we always played that. Um, yeah, I think always just sort of grown up with their music and they've got so many songs and I still feel like even now I come across random ones where I'm like, oh my God, this is really cool. Why have I not heard this before? And I love those ones. Yeah, those ones, are so, in, in, in some ways it's all about those ones with the Beatles, like yeah. just like how good every like, look, last yeah. album track is. Like yeah, made... I was I was watching a, a movie with Steve Carell in and then this Beatles song was like playing over the the intro or the end. I was like, what is that song? And it's The Fall on the Hill. Do you know that one? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I've never heard this one before. It's so interesting and cool. Um, so I love it when you just like hear little nuggets, but you can tell straight away almost, can't you, that it's them, you know? Yeah, yeah, you can tell it's them, and the, the the sense of melody I think is so strong on everything yeah. that it makes it like being that obsessed with the Beatles. Growing up, I definitely became, uh, you know, the melodies always had to be very, very good, which in a way makes listening to some music difficult. Also, if you come from a Beatles place too much, like listening to jazz and stuff becomes really, really uh, difficult to like get into to start to start with anyway. Yeah, yeah, I love, they do, they have some amazing, like, chord changes and, the, yeah, the melodies and just, I love it. I love Golden Slumbers as well. Um, there's just, yeah. there's so many good ones. There's so many. Yeah. What's your, what, what's your favourite? Uh, I mean, it, I wouldn't be able to... I wouldn't be able to say definitively, <laughs> uh, but but I mean, I've made yeah. you do so. So I, I'll, I, you know, I'd say Across the Universe <laughs> is pretty good. Uh, not pretty good, is, is amazing. I really love Across the Universe. Uh, and, and a bit like Let It Be, but uh, The Long and Winding Road, I think 
I, was, I can't remember. I was just, that came on the radio, I think, again. I, I love like, that. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? Uh, I mean, obviously, I've heard so these songs good. a million times, I'm but they don't get old. Yeah. Don't get old, yeah. Are you more Paul McCartney or John Lennon, do you think? Uh, I do like uh, John Lennon uh, in terms of the voice um, and I like the, you know, the attitude is, is his, his wit and stuff. Um, but then Paul McCartney was the best melodies. Um, so both. I used to be more uh, Paul McCartney. Uh, what, what about you? Oh, and then it changed as you got older. Yeah, yeah, changed over to, to Lennon just about. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, definitely both. They're both they're both legends, aren't they? Really? Yeah, <laughs> it's hard yeah. To answer. It's impossible. Uh, it's impossible to choose. Uh, but we were watching. Have you seen the the Oasis documentary on um, Netflix? Supersonic. Yes, I love Oasis. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, just talking about the Beatles reminded reminded me of that. It was kind of cool how, like, three decades later they kind of reintroduced the whole Beatles vibe. Obviously they, they had many different influences, but it was just cool yeah. to, see, to see that again. And among young people, it wasn't like uh, now, a lot of the time when people do Beatles influence things, it will feel like they're an oldies act. Yeah. Where Oasis were like at the tipping, at the cutting edge of like youth culture and stuff. It was, oh yeah. I think that will ever happen again with, with rock music. What you mean to have like a, a big moment? Yeah, I mean, probably, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think it always has to like, you know, come round, it always goes in phases, but I think, yeah, I think so. I think people still love, well, I, I'm speaking for myself, but just live, amazing live music, where they're just rocking out on stage and just like going for it. I mean, it's the best. Yeah, it is the it is the best. <laughs> the, the live side of it. Uh, how much have you have you missed um, gigs uh, and and, yeah. uh, and and that that side of music? Are you optimistic Love. they'll come back this this year? Well, I've been like some of my festivals have come back on. Like I was worried that I didn't know what. Well, obviously, none of us knew what was going to happen this year. But now they've been, you know, with like the new roadmap. Who knows if it's going to change again? Like, who knows? But at the moment, um, everything's looking good for some festivals that I'm down to play this year. So I'm like beside myself with excitement to play live to a festival crowd with my band. It's just going to be unbelievable. I've never gone this long in my life not playing a live show ever. It's been so long to have not played a set. Um, so I'm just going to be over the moon and I cannot, I just can't wait. It's definitely like, I love so many different sides, like being in the studio, I love writing. I love, um, you know, performing TV shows. The best has got to be live shows, live festivals, when the crowd love nothing more than hearing the live music and the vibe and just, it's just the best feeling in the world. I love on both sides being in the crowd and obviously being on the on the stage and and doing it. It's been sorry, Pixie. I, I you you froze for a minute there, uh, uh, but but oh, I, I, I I heard I heard most of uh, I heard most most of your answer. Um, okay. <laughs> so, so it was literally only for a couple of seconds, uh, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be a mate. It feels almost too good to be true uh, that that it will be coming around. But you know, fingers crossed. So we've got one more uh, one more song uh, that that we need you to pick. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay, one more song. One more song. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what am I gonna go for? Okay, I am gonna go for. Du, 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 du. Oh man. What am I going to go for? Oh, there's so many good ones. Um, let's say. Uh, oh, God. 
sorry about this. No oh, worries. I'm sorry. It's adding it's adding some uh, some uh, some drama to the uh, <laughs> to the episode, which is good. Intention. <laughs> um okay i am gonna go ah oh, it's so hard because like you can go for the song or the vibe or the memory that you have attached to the song personally yeah. do you know what i mean That's, that is the tough there's so many good ones but randomly i'm just gonna go for this one which is an adele song and it's called melt my heart to stone and I think she wrote this with White, I think. And um, it's just because, I don't know, it just was like springing out to me. It's just because when I was younger, when the album came out and I was like, knew it from start to finish, um, that was always my favorite song. And I was like singing it all the time. Like the words will never leave my head. I know those lyrics inside out. Um, it was from her 19 album. Um, and I think it's my favorite Adele song because of that, that time and that, that time in my life. I don't know. It just reminds me of a certain time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that album was amazing. I'd need to re-listen to that song, but, yeah, but I'm looking forward to, to, to doing so. Uh, but I remember when that album yeah. came out and she's only released three albums, Adele, and it shows you. I mean, it's what you were saying earlier about uh, having a cohesive body of work. Like, that's kind of all you need, uh, it seems, if you're going to be as... But, yeah, it's strange how she's that successful in today's era where everybody seems to think you need to release singles Absolutely. every five minutes. I know, I know. And it's... Yeah, I love that. I love that. Like, and I, and I love... You know, obviously, like that song wasn't a single or one of her her biggest selling um, songs. Although it's probably, you know, compared to everyone else, it's still one of the biggest selling songs. But <laughs> it was an album track, and um, but I love the album tracks. Like they they always tend to be some of my favourites because you know you just feel like they're your favourite personal thing. Um, but yeah. I loved that. Yeah, the album. It's, it's the album tracks it. that uh, I don't know. They feel like they're less. Uh, sometimes they're less contrived, and they're less, you know, they're less for radio or whatever it is. And the, the they feel you can get more of a personal attachment to them. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, I think your your five choices yeah. were, were were very good. So I'm imagining, you know, the Uber driver had a very uh, had a very good time uh, if you just put on that <laughs> playlist. How yeah. often do you add things to the playlist? Have you been listening to to stuff, you know, new releases this year? Do you keep up with all all of that this year and last yeah, year? Yeah, I've got different um, loads of uh, different playlists. Um, but I guess I do add I do add songs to to this one. There's a complete mixture of of artists, um, but it's like yeah, Beatles, Carol King, Don McLean. These are obviously all old school vibes. Fleetwood Mac, Sheryl Crow. Um, but I do, I do listen to new stuff as well, like the like the new um, new music playlists and stuff. But yeah, I guess I I do have a, a problem of just going back to the listen to the same songs over and over. Um, but yeah, I have all different playlists. Like I have like a, a 90s playlist, a 70s playlist, a, like different eras I like. Um, I love the, the you know, like on Apple Music, you know when they, they uh, make up your own favorites mix and it changes every Tuesday. Mm. Love that. Yeah, they, they do those that. things really well. It's such a great way of discovering new music. But uh, so do you, cause you keep returning to the old stuff uh, do you think, yeah. and you know, so do I, and so do loads of people, I think, who come on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, do you think when you hear modern radio, uh, do you think it's as strong as as those uh, classics, that, like the new albums? Do you think there's music that being made that's as good? Or do you think we're at the moment in a, in a point where we're waiting for the next uh, big cultural moment uh, on the music front? 
I think there's, um, yeah, there's definitely some great stuff out there. It's just a different time. Like you were saying, a lot of people are, are releasing stuff all the time, very different to before. Um, but I still think there is a space for albums and people are, you know, still, people will always love that. Like you said, like timeless music will always be timeless music. Um, but I do think people are missing the live, you know, just like real live organic music. I think there, there will definitely be, and there are still loads of new artists that are in that vein for sure. Um, which is really cool. But obviously there's loads of different genres that are massive with, you know, dance music and, and EDM still and house. Um, but yeah, I feel like, especially because we've been deprived of actually going to festivals and, and live shows, I think people are just gonna wanna, wanna hear want that real- in front of them. Yeah, that real stuff. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some, some new, um, great stuff but I I will always be um my ears will always like be excited by really well written songs um that's what that's what I like to hear this episode is brought to you by Tingly Tingly is on a mission to change the culture of gifting by encouraging everyone to give experiences rather than material things Tingley's passionate team has handpicked the world's best experiences, including travel, adventure, romance, food, wine, and more, and brought them all together in one place. Tingley gives the recipient of the experience freedom of choice. Here's how it works. You purchase a gift box, Tingley sends an e-voucher or delivers a plastic free gift box, and the recipient chooses from hundreds of experiences in over a hundred different countries. There's no expiry date on any of Tingley's gift experiences. Tingley encourages us to give stories, not stuff, to treasure memories above possessions. To find out more, go to tingley.com. If you're enjoying the Greatest Music of All Time podcast, you can keep up to date with all of our latest episodes for free by subscribing. If you're watching on YouTube, the subscribe button is located at the top of the Tom Cridlin YouTube page. It's also at the bottom right of any video that you watch on YouTube. If you're listening on an audio platform, such as Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe at the top of the page.